It is election day, and brothers and sisters, if you have not yet voted, the most important thing that you can do today, even if it takes all day, is to cast that vote. Secondly, once you have voted, and if you have already voted in the previous day, then do everything you can today to get others to vote. This is how we participate. We inform, we educate, we remind, we nudge our fellow citizens to make sure they exercise their right and duty because our teachings from the Word of God and, and our Lord Jesus Christ and the church tell us it is a duty to vote. Because what are we doing when we vote? We are governing ourselves. We are, as the people, setting public policy. Now, it's a series of steps. We put into office by our vote today those who will write our laws. And as they are asking for our vote, and we're talking about lawmakers on the state level. Do you know who your state legislators are? And we are talking about lawmakers on the federal level. When they ask for our vote, they have to tell us what kind of public policies do they support. And they should be listening to the people for whom they work, namely the voters, the taxpayers. They work for us. And so they should be listening to us, but then they have to tell us how they intend to govern it, what kind of laws they favor. Because if they don't favor the kind of laws we favor, then we should not favor them with our vote. We're electing people to set public policy, and those public policies have to protect the rights of our fellow citizens and our own. But voting, as I have often explained on these broadcasts throughout this election season, is an act not only of love of God, because he set up all authority himself, but of love of neighbor, because we're electing people who are going to set public policies that are going to affect the rights of our neighbors now and into the future of our families, our friends, children, grandchildren, and beyond. That's why we advocate for lawmakers who defend the defenseless. This is what the law is supposed to do, to defend the defenseless. That's why we have these readings today. Isaiah says to the people of his time that want to be religious, he's saying, you know, it's not just about fasting, praying, doing religious activities. You need to do those things. But if you do those things, then what you have to be committed also to doing is setting free the oppressed. Intervene and help the people who are helpless. One of the ways we do that might be setting up soup kitchens or praying at abortion facilities or working in pregnancy centers or building homes for the homeless. And another way we do that is by voting. Because we look at what the, pro pro the proposals are, what the policies are. We look at what those who have already held elected office have been able to do for the helpless and the homeless and the poor and the oppressed and the unborn. We look at the track record. Those that are in Congress already, those that are in your state legislature already, the president who has been in office already, his opponent has been in office already too. What you have to ask today is, where's the beef? Where's the results? What have they done? If there's a track record, if you can see, hey, wait a minute, you know, they... They lifted six and a half million people out of poverty, seven million people like the president did. They restored more jobs to people who didn't have jobs than ever before. They brought unemployment low, to its lowest levels ever. If there's fruit, if there's a track record, they, they brought about peace. They kept countries from fighting with each other. They entered into historic peace accords. I'm talking about our president. They work to protect the unborn. Oh, this other candidate, no, they're voting to kill the unborn. They're in favor of chopping babies' heads off. Oh, yeah. I'm going to vote for them because I want babies' heads chopped off. You look at the fruit. You look at the results. And so Isaiah says, 
Listen, you want to fast? You want to please the Lord? You want Him to hear your prayer? Then hear the prayers of the helpless. So how would we protect the baby from getting chopped apart from abortion? Stop electing people who allow abortion. It's as simple as that. Keep electing people who allow abortion, and abortion remains. Is this rocket science? Is there some secret mystical formula that I'm not aware of or some extra knowledge I'm going to gain if I pray that I don't have now when I say that simple statement? See, some people think that there is. These are the mystical religious frauds, the liars. They go out there and they pretend that if you pray, they're going to have some kind of mystical knowledge that's going to twist your mind somehow that's going to enable you to vote for a baby-killing Democrat. There's a religious frauds out there. They're frauds. Isaiah warns about that. The psalm warns about that. The frauds. Now, four years ago, I showed you a baby. I got on camera on Facebook and I showed you an aborted baby. I happened to have an aborted baby at that moment because we were preparing the baby for burial. It wasn't a mass, by the way, but of course the religious frauds, they don't know the difference between a mass and a, and a, and a, a, a barbecue. But we showed you a baby. And let me tell you why we showed you a baby, because I'm going to repeat the exact message that I gave on that day, just before the election of 2016. I appealed to you, the voters, with the baby in front of me, killed by the Democrat baby-loving, baby-killing frauds. I showed you the baby that these destructive, dangerous, deceptive, America-hating, God-hating, religious-hating, life-hating murderers who are asking for your vote, the fruit of their labors is a dead baby. I showed you the baby because what I said at that moment was, you can protect this child. I was speaking for the child, and I am speaking for the child right now. You can protect this child. How can you protect this child? Change the law. Oh, but I can't change the law. Oh, yes, you can. By voting for the people who make the law and who are willing to protect those babies. You see, it's really very simple. If I want this baby, for first of all, a lot of these frauds, they don't want you to know what abortion actually is. So they don't want you to know that the policies that they, the Democrat Party, embrace actually kill babies. No, no, no. They want you to think about some abstract, vague concepts like constitutional rights and, and, and you know, reproductive freedom. They couldn't care two cents about religious freedom, but they're all reproductive freedom. That's what, you know, like rolls off their tongue like, you know, like honey. And so they're going to say to you, uh, oh, yeah, you know, you know, vote for us. Yeah, right. I'm going to vote for somebody that's going to kill babies. So they don't want you to know, first of all, that it's the killing of babies. But secondly, then, you know, when we show you that it is the killing of babies, oh, that's why people get so mad at us in the pro-life movement. We actually show them the fruits of their labor. How do they try to wiggle out of it then? See, brothers and sisters, it's really very simple. If you want to stop the killing of babies and you want to protect them, then you elect the people who are willing to pass laws to protect them. And so, speaking out on a day like this when people are going to the polls is speaking, is advocating, is doing exactly what Prophet Isaiah is urging us to do here. This is the fasting that I wish. Releasing those bound unjustly, untying the thongs of the yoke. We've got a yoke on the, on the heads of the unborn. How do we untie it? Vote for those that have the power to untie it. Setting free the oppressed. How do you do that? One of the ways you do that is to vote for those that are willing, those that are committed to set them free. Now, I want to go on to a... Uh, by the way, this has to do with this gospel passage, too. Jesus says, look, you should be happy. You should be happy 
that the people you help cannot repay you. There's the unborn fit into that category perfectly. You should be happy that they cannot repay you. You will be repaid in the resurrection of the just. You vote pro-life, you're going to be repaid in the resurrection of the just. You vote pro-abortion, you vote Democrat, you're going to have an awful lot to answer for. Blood is dripping from your hands. Be careful of your ballot. Make sure that the blood splotch didn't, didn't, didn't uh, make the, the, the val ballot unreadable. Get the blood all over it. Then there's another thing here on in the prophet Isaiah. Remove from your midst not only oppression, all right, stop, killing, stop killing the babies, but there's another form of oppression that Biden and the Democrats, they, they go for it all the way. They want to shut down the church. <laughs> Some people who have been deceived right now think I'm exaggerating. Some of them even dress like me. They should be ashamed of themselves. They should not put on these vestments anymore. Fake leaders. See, we've got fake news. We've got fake Catholics. We've got faith, fake clergy, too. They're fake. Because they don't speak up. They don't know the difference between taking care of the church or letting the church be squashed. They don't know the difference. It's like if you're a father of a family and you don't know the difference between someone who's trying to help your family and someone who's trying to squelch your family. Kidnap your family. You've got to know the difference if you're going to lead. There are a lot of fake clergy out there. They don't know how to lead. should be ashamed of themselves. Just go work in, I don't know, go work in McDonald's. No offense to those that work in McDonald's. But they shouldn't be trying to lead the church. They're fakes, all of them. So remove oppression from your midst. Vote for those that are going to up uphold the freedom of the church. And then remove from your midst false accusation and malicious speech. I set up a website called electionhonesty.com. And on that website addressed 12 of the most common lies being told about President Trump. Oh, the lies. People, these people don't know what they're talking about. But they're malicious. It's malicious. It's not just false because they made a mistake. These are falsehoods that have been refuted. And when you, when you know that a falsehood has been refuted, and you go and you assert it anyway, that's not just being wrong, that's being malicious. And we have to remove that from the equation. Electionhonesty.com. That'll help you to do that. I want to give you one more reflection, brothers and sisters, as I urge you not only to exercise this, this wonderful act of love of God and neighbor, which is voting. There's a spiritual dimension to it. You're loving God. You're loving your neighbor. You're protecting your neighbor's rights. You're setting free the oppressed. Not only that. But listen to or think about how voting, uh, the day of voting, makes us all equal in regard to governing ourselves. Isn't it interesting? The person who does not even have a high school diploma has just as powerful a vote as the person who has five doctorates. The person who has not even so much as been elected to the local PTA, their vote counts just as much as the vote cast by the President of the United States. This is, the voting booth is a great equalizer. We all have a vote. We all have a voice. Why? Because we're all living under those same laws that result from whom we elect those same court decisions that result from whom we elect. Because we elect the president that chooses the judges and we elect the U.S. Senate that confirms them. We all live under these laws and policies. And so our system beautifully provides each of us an equal opportunity to speak into that system, to direct where that system and its laws and policies 
are going to take us. Well, we'll have a lot more to say today in our other broadcasts outside of the Mass. So let us take again to heart these words of Isaiah. Let this be our spiritual motivation in voting. Break every yoke. Set free the oppressed. Cry out full-throated and unsparingly for the rights of God's people, your brothers and sisters, and vote in such a way that will protect them. Amen.